Greetings sailors, welcome back to World of Warships, and it's another bit of Tirpitz action because today's the day it comes out, at least in EU. Now the way they've done it, it's going to be like the War Spite, it's going to be a, uh, a package, a bundle that you can buy for uh, a limited time, it's not just going to be around as a regular on the tech tree uh, that you can then buy in game. And I'm a little bit disappointed, but I do think uh, just looking at what uh, the World of Warships uh, team is doing generally, that seems to be... I don't know what the proportion is, but there's a lot more of these limited time ships in World of Warships than there are in uh, equivalent premiums in World of Tanks. But they're also doing that with World of Tanks a bit more lately as well. I'm not t entirely sure I think that's a great idea, especially when they're worried about client bloat, but it might be a kind of a more long-term marketing strategy where they go, right, we're going to have these in, we're going to make them available for sale at most a couple of times a year. And therefore, the rarity factor, shall we say, bumps up people's interest in them. So I think if you miss the window on getting the turpits this time, you might not necessarily have to wait that long before getting it again. You know, it might be uh, during a Christmas sale or an anniversary event or whatever. But marketing is also one of the reasons, in fact, it's the big reason why this isn't available at the same time across all servers. And it's not even, I think, coming out at the same time on the RU server. Now, this is not the first time we've had this difference. With the Berlin trio that came out, well, uh, I said Berlin a bit weird there, didn't I? Berlin, there we go. Berlin, Berlin. I can say Berlin, you guys. Not all of the Berlin tanks were available across all servers. They were on some servers. I think NA and SEA got all four tanks on those servers. They were the Berlin Quartet. On the RU server, they didn't get the Cromwell B in uh, that event. And on our server, we didn't get the 122S in with that event. And I was in the absurd position, at least from my point of view, where around 40% of my viewers were able to buy a tank that I was basically not allowed to preview at that particular time. And 122S was then, later down the line, sold for a limited time on the EU server, but still, it was a bit silly. And because there's this kind of regional split, and because the different regional teams have quite a lot of autonomy in terms of how they do these things, well, from my point of view, as somebody with a global audience, and as I've said, about 30 to 40 percent of you are in the NA server region. Sometimes it can lead to absurd things like that. And in this case, it's I can show you a ship that you can't buy for at least another month, if not slightly longer. Now, from Wargaming's point of view, there is a very valid sound reason for this, and it's because um, the different major expos and conferences uh, that are happening in various places are not happening all exactly at the same time. They are happening relatively close together, but it's far enough apart that as they've decided to hold back the Tirpitz in each region to coincide with these major events, and obviously in EU it was Gamescom, which has been and gone, where they unveiled it, that means different places are getting it at different times. And while it's uh, an understandable region, uh, reason, even it's uh, pretty logical, it's also uh, hard to be sympathetic when marketing is given as a reason for something. So it's not like Wargaming are doing this, uh, the, the regional teams are doing this just to spite people. There are uh, perfectly sound, from their point of view, reasons for doing this. I do also think that Wargaming have been slightly hoisted by their own petard here because the nature of World of Tanks, the nature of World of Warships is that this is instant action. This is what you get with online multiplayer gaming for the most part. You jump in and stuff happens and it's exciting. And so to, to expect your player base when you've got this game that's all about instant gratification to be absolutely fine with sitting and waiting up to, you know, what, a month, month and a half, two months. I don't know how long NA is going to have to wait for this. I think, honestly, if they were expecting everybody to be 100% fine with it, um, they were a little bit naive in that expectation. And I don't know that anyone really would have seriously done so, but it's the kind of thing where if you're going to make this kind of decision, you've got to be prepared for the fact that there's going to be 
fallout from making this kind of decision, especially given the nature of the game. So I, I can understand why Wargaming are doing it, but at the same time, as I've said, marketing is not a reason where you can go, oh, well, okay, I'm going to be totally understanding and sympathetic about that. So, NA players, you have my sympathy. You're going to have to wait a bit longer, but I can assure you, I think it's going to be worth the wait. Now, as to why it was in uh, unveiled in EU first, well, Gamescom is a German conference. It's the first of the German warships, and within the EU community, which is bigger than the NA community, so numbers may have also played into this, you know, the absolute uh, numbers of the, the player base. Within that uh, community, there is a pretty big German sub-community. In fact, it's probably the biggest of the uh, uh, national languages outside of English, because a lot of people across EU do speak English. But um, yeah, I'm thinking equivalent here to maybe Polish within World of Tanks, and there is a pretty big proportion of, within EU, uh, Polish players. So... I think that's the reason why we've gotten it first. It's not favoritism, it's the fact that Gamescom happened first, the fact that it was in Germany, and the fact that we, in the EU uh, server area, have a pretty big German language community. So naturally they were going to be very excited by the prospect. But I have to say, uh, obviously, um, like 40% of my viewer base, uh, base? viewer base, is NA generally, and looking at the numbers from my Turpits preview video, I think it was an even higher proportion of people than that from NA that were watching that video. So I think there's probably significant interest within all regions for these ships. I mean, the Turpits itself is a very famous ship, so I don't know. I, f I feel like maybe Wargaming have shot themselves in the foot slightly, slightly, but I can understand why they've done it. So enough about that, let's talk about the match at hand. I am the last remaining battleship. This is a, uh, a domination mode game. We have multiple cap points and we are badly behind on points. And it was around about this time when our northern forces just got wiped out that I was thinking, okay, we're probably not going to win this. I'm the last battleship. I'm going to be the focus of the enemy team. And although I've got, you know, a decent amount of armor, I've got um, the biggest guns out of our remaining ship, they've also got a pair of carriers left. Now we got a carrier as well. That's going to turn out to be very useful, but uh, this was not looking good and I was not feeling optimistic about this at all. Now I was trying to focus the enemy turpits because I know he's got a rate of fire that I have to be worried about because I've got that rate of fire as well. And I was actually trying to play a bit more with the angling of my ship in this game. I've been reading up about the uh, the damage uh, calculation mechanics specifically, and it's actually quite interesting. It's a little bit complicated. Uh, there's some pretty good in-depth uh, uh, discussions of it on both the official NA and uh, EU forums, where it basically is laid out by uh, super testers from those respective regions. Um, but basically... The, the the angling, I mean, it's not specifically uh, quite to do with uh, hit points, but it, it kind of ties in. Because if you're angling, you're more likely to bounce the shots, and you make yourself, uh, if you're facing head-on or um, stern on to an enemy, you're a smaller target to hit. And it's why, if you're in a cruiser, for instance, and you're approaching a battleship, you want to come at them straight on, because uh, they... Uh, well, if you can come at them straight on from their front or rear, they can only get half their guns at you, and you're a smaller target. Now, the disadvantage for a battleship is that half your guns out of co are out of commission when you're angling like that. And so, I wasn't quite so much doing it here, but a bit later on, I'm going to be playing more with... Um, basically trying to keep my ship at an angle, not just sailing broadside on in front of the enemy ships, and actually... Uh, Playing with range a bit as well, but angling out just enough that I could fire off my, uh, I think it was rear turrets at the time, and then kind of straighten out again to try and make myself a smaller target again. So I wasn't trying to, trying to do that quite so much at first. I was just more, oh, that's another battleship coming in. I was trying to just more do as much damage as possible at this point, because I thought we were going to lose, to be quite honest. We've got less than 200 points. They're just about to get 800. 
They only need to sink a couple more ships and we've had it. But for this part, I'm just, yeah, it's just not looking good at all. I'm on fire, I've got about four different ships shooting at me and I was trying to focus down the Tirpitz but he's been able to make a getaway. So I'm going to switch focus to the North Carolina at this point. Now he's only got about 12,000 health left. Two citadels, or even you know one citadel and another good hit will finish him off. But I don't think I get that lucky. And as you can see, at range, I'm actually bouncing some of these shots because he's heading away from me. And I think it's actually even possible to bounce. Uh, oh, there we go. There's some hits. Bounce shots off the deck armor as well. But I'm not sure. It probably depends on the ships. And hello, torpedoes. Now those look like they're diverging, so I'm just going to hold course, and I probably should have been paying a little bit more attention, but as they were dropped pretty close, my chances of altering course were pretty minimal, and it kind of worked out, but I'm not going to cl claim that was all down to me. I mean, that was me kind of crossing my fingers and hoping, and I knew at most I'd take one in the bow, but this was an advantage for me. Now, they actually had a carrier down in uh, A1 who... Uh, uh, J1 rather who one of our cruisers went after and that's fine but the other carrier that was left alive was not doing manual broadside torp drops which you cannot avoid in a battleship and it's why the carriers have uh, in the skilled hands uh, a single carrier at high tiers can absolutely dominate a match because they can do damage that you cannot avoid they are not subject to the same amount of RNG as uh, a battleship is with having to fire at long ranges or even closer ranges. Now, I'm getting really bad here. This is looking pretty bad. I'm down to 20,000 health. I'm actually trying to beat a retreat at this point. And oh, that's a nice citadel. But I mean, I'm trying my best to focus these ships, but they're in the same position. If they're getting a bit too damaged, they're actually trying to pull back and use the islands for cover. And that's a little bit awkward. I can also see this Oba trying to close the distance, presumably to use his torpedoes on me. But for now I'm going to concentrate still on this Colorado, who has by far the biggest guns, and the Ioba may set me on fire, but the Colorado, if he citadels me, or even if he just gets a, a high number of uh, AP penetrations into non-critical areas, could do a lot of damage. So I'm going to put my torps out. At the very least it'll force the Ioba to turn away. We've also got that cruiser that was uh, coming up from the south where he was dealing with a carrier and actually that is going to be, as it turns out, absolutely critical. We've got a destroyer and another cruiser that are coming round from the north as well. And that also is going to be very important in helping turn this around. We're still badly down on points. If I die, and I'm very conscious of this, if I die that is going to be a huge chunk of points to the enemy team. So I... It's not just cowardice me running away here. I'm aware that me staying alive is particularly important to us not losing this. And apart from anything else, if I die also, my guns are out of the game and therefore it's going to be a bunch of battleships versus a bunch of cruisers. Which is not particularly an equal fight. Although if the cruisers can get close enough to use their torpedoes, then all bets are off. But this Oba is taking a proper battering. And I've actually... The speed of... The Tirpitz is coming in very useful here because although he is closing, he's not closing that quickly. If I'd been in an American battleship, he would have been able to get a lot closer a lot more quickly. Now I'm burning, I'm less than 10,000 health, I am out of repairs. So any damage I take from this point forward is just gonna whittle away what remaining health I've got with absolutely no possibility of getting more back. Now, the Ioba closing on us was just on his own, and the rest of them have actually turned their focus on that Atago to the south. In fact, the three remaining cruisers on our team, I think, are... No, two of them are Atagos, and the other two are... I'm not actually sure. Mayokos, maybe? What are the, whatever the regular tier 8 is. I think they were all tier 8s. But... This is the point where I actually need to start making a turnaround to uh, get my guns to bear because that that Otago, I think it's an Otago, is not going to last that long on his own. Yeah, there it is. It's uh, the other Otago. So although 
him becoming the focus of the enemy team has been really useful. We can't just run away and hang him out to dry because if he goes down, then they're going to turn their attention back to us. We're going to get picked apart and there's just going to be less guns. So it's time to start turning and get back in the fight. And I probably could have turned around the other direction, but still it would have meant bringing my guns, at least one set of my guns, all the way around. So either way, I was going to have a, a little gap where I only had half my firepower available. But half your firepower is better than none. And, oh, there we go. That's one less ship. We're actually now ahead on points. And if we can keep this up, we actually might win this. Now this has actually already been the most number of hits I have had in a, a battleship game, I think. I actually had a really good Congo game uh, on CBT where I put that up on the channel. I can't remember offhand what number of hits I had, but I've already got nearly 60 hits with a battleship. And that doesn't tell you the damage, but that does tell you how good the rate of fire is. And there we go. Nice. I mean, it was burning out anyway, but... Uh, I don't know, he might have been able to uh, ju have been just about to reload his guns and start firing at us, I don't know. But that other, other Otago has paid the price, unfortunately. But that alone turned this around. That Otago taking the brunt of the uh, uh, attention from those three or four battleships has been hugely important. The other cruiser and the destroyer coming around from the, the north, they've taken out some ships between them. That's proved hugely important. And although for the majority of this match, it looked, I mean, at least the first half, it looked incredibly dicey. It looked like we were going to lose. We've actually managed to turn this around to the point where if we kill this Colorado, that's it, game one. And in part of that, uh, we have, uh, part of that is because we have capped more of the capture points, and that's down to that uh, destroyer and cruiser that went round to the north. But also, uh, just the couple of actions of a couple of players have made a vast amount of difference. Now, this is the point where I was trying to uh, just kind of bring my ship around uh, to... Because this guy's focusing on me. Uh, although I think at this point he's switched his uh, focus to that Otago that was closing the distance with him to... Uh, and using the, the land masses very cleverly there to get close enough to launch his torpedoes. But, and there we go, I get the last kill. It was uh, just enough people hanging on and keeping their guns in the game and playing smart and doing the damage and getting close when it was needed that in the end I think that was a really good, really... Uh, 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 I don't even know how to say it, but it was a, a, a team effort. It was a really good team effort. And uh, I was top of that team. I wasn't expecting to be, but that actually ended up being a way better game even than the uh, the match that I showed you in my preview with nearly 130,000 AP damage. Now, I wasn't ever close enough to anyone to use my torpedoes, and a lot of the time in the turpits you're not going to be, but... Uh, yeah, I was I was pleased with that result because it was one of those games where you're just thinking we're gonna lose We're gonna lose we're gonna lose and you just Sometimes if you just hang on and you just keep fighting and struggling you can turn it around and what looks like a certain loss is actually uh, it, it turns into something like this and Everyone who loves this kind of tale when it looks like you know You're on the ropes and then you bounce back to this kind of win this kind of victory very profitable victory, I must say. And uh, so therefore it makes for very entertaining uh, YouTube viewing. So, yes. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, for people that can buy the Tirpitz, well, let's hope the package it comes in isn't too expensive. And obviously it's going to be different prices across the different servers, so I have no idea what it'll be in NA. Hopefully they don't uh, gouge you for this very nice ship indeed. Uh, but, yeah, I'm probably going to get one. And I say that as somebody that doesn't particularly like battleships as they are. I think Jingle said exactly the same thing, that he has problems with battleships, but this is a, a nice one for reasons I went over in my preview that I won't re-go over because that would be a bit pointless. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, replay. And I, uh, I once again empathise with all my NA viewers that can't buy it just yet. You know, just patience. It will come. Your time will come. 
If you have enjoyed this, you can leave any comments below, you can hit the like button, you can subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay tuned for more.